Kia ora. E ngā mana, e ngā reo, e ngā waka, tēnā koutou. So for everybody in the room, for everybody joining us online, for the voice in your vital essence, welcome. Uh, no mai, uh, no ake, ki tēnē ata, tēnō miharo e noho tahi ai tato. So here we are um, as one for this moment in time for the launch of the new brand of Age Concern New Zealand. Uh, kia puare te hiningaro, te manawa me ngā taranga, ki ngā kupu a o tatohoa. And it's our hope, I guess, today, as I've been joining you virtually, that the words that are spoken by friends and um, workers and volunteers and the people of Age Concern, as they're heard, that they go into our heads and our hearts and our ears. Um, kamutu kia puha ke ngā kete e tonu i tana i tine ata. That we would leave that room there in Wellington where you've had croissants, I had porridge, who knows what else has been consumed around the country, but that we would leave this time together more full up, our kete would be full of, I guess, the hopes and aspirations of Age Concern New Zealand. Kamutu, uh, tene tanga, um, uh, yeah. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tato katoa. So um, thank you for having me today as a speaker. I have loved learning about age concern. I knew a little, um, but like a good pseudo journalist, I did a little digging. And what I found out was your origin story, the story about um, Sister Tingley, who was a district nursing services nurse in Dunedin in the winter of 1948, digging around um, with Bud Glasson, a local journalist, and together, Sister Tingley and Bud Glasson um, covered what was going on. They covered the hardship. They covered the needs of the people, the older people, the older citizens of Dunedin. And Dunedin listened. So Dunedin listened and got together, and, and the story kind of continues from there. You know that they, they founded that first chapter of what has now become Age Concern. What I noticed is that Bud and Sister Tingley were willing to pay attention to what was going on. They were willing to talk about what was going on. When they talked about it, a fire was lit in the hearts and minds of the citizens of Dunedin, and then they took action. And I guess um, what I was thinking about when I was thinking about this morning in this relaunch is how important it is for us to pay attention and that the power of our words, the power of our posture as a people, as a cohort, um, as a generation, each generation, it, that impacts the world that we live in. We create it through our words and we create it through our actions. So I love seeing um, the branding. I love the the sense of the circle of life, the fact that when you are older, your life is not over. I love the different colours that Age Concern is going to look after, the blue people, the purple people and the green people. Everyone will be looked after. Uh, I love the fact that the huia feather was so symbolic. It was a token of honour, respect and friendship. And so the other thing about the origin story that um, I discovered was that when Bud Glasson, as a journalist, good to know some of them can do some good, wrote those stories in Dunedin in the winter of 48, he was himself 49 years old. So he was somebody who was thinking about his next season. And earlier this year, I was also 49 years old. Happily, I am now 50. And, and somebody said to me, what are you interested in? What do you want to talk about? And out of that corridor, that conversation, a podcast was born that Karen has mentioned. And that podcast is called Grey Areas. Not because it's just about going grey, like we did an episode on here, yep. But it's not actually about whether or not you choose to dye your hair. It's about what does freedom, what does wellness, what does wholeness look like for you? And if it's choosing to go gray, then do that. And what we discovered with these kōrero in terms of the gray area podcasts is that when we talked about menopause, which is a natural life transition that's associated with aging, when we talked about inevitable grief, the fact that we will lose our parents and loved ones, we found that New Zealand came along for the ride. And um, to date, I have the number right here, 96,426 downloads of that podcast. So nearly 100,000 people wanting to engage in the conversation about going grey and growing up in Aotearoa, New Zealand. What does that say to me? Well, there are some other, we, we were the number one podcast and I'm not really saying this to Skype because, you know, New Zealanders don't like that. But, but I sat down and was curious about 
what my next season could look like and what my friends and family's next season could look like. And New Zealand has shown up for that conversation. Um, we had had 4.5 million Instagram views. We were the number one podcast in New Zealand and stayed in the top 10 for the whole series. And I guess I felt surprised, delighted, privileged and honoured that actually we are here. We are willing to have this conversation. And as Wayne said at the very beginning, um, I'm known as a sandwich generation person. So um, what does that mean? That means that I have teenagers at home. I'm working. I have quite fulfilling work at the moment. And I also am caring for and supporting my aging parents. And so we're sandwiched right between um, those two um, very vibrant activities. And and we are even now thinking about what do we do for our retirement. So to give you um, a bit of insight into my life, um, I've got a 15, 17 and 19 year old. Only one is at uni, so the other two are still home. And my parents have moved onto our property in a separate apartment. And my father is of ailing health. So he's had strokes, has early Parkinson's and other um, medical complications. And my mother is a go-getter. She is um, the uh, most improved player at the local croquet club. She just joined, she's the junior champion. Um, she is um, knitting and traveling and, um, uh, writing poems and making art and and living quite a different life to my father. So right in our very own home, we have uh, two different expressions of wisdom years. And what it's making me do is pay attention to the kind of care that they can receive, the kind of support I can give them, but also what my future looks like. And I love the fact that age concern is work that we will all benefit from. I've been involved in a lot of different non-for-profits um, in the space of health services and, and poverty services and trafficking and all sorts of different areas. And I have never known if the work I was doing would have any impact on my life. I guess everybody who volunteers, works for and collaborates with Age Concern Aotearoa knows that they will potentially reap the benefits of this mahi. So I, I guess um, my exhortation to all of you is that in this vibrant new branding, in the colors that have been added, in the energy of that beautiful circle, that moving circle, in the symbol of honor, respect and friendship, that we can move forward um, like that, that we don't have to wait. Um, I guess one of my or one of my challenges to myself and perhaps even to us as a society is not to wait for things to get better, not to pretend that bad things aren't happening, um, not to, I guess, um, yeah, just hope that things don't get worse, but to actively start to um, embrace this next season. And I think that our generation, my generation, and, and when I looked at the audience numbers of grey areas, it was 30s, 40s, 50s, 60 year olds. So there's this whole cohort of people, majority is 40, 50 and 60 year olds. But we are saying, okay, what do we want our next season to look like? And and really making that decision in your in your soul, what you want for yourself will impact on what you want for others. So I think that that there's room in our um, society at the moment for us to have and practice radical self-acceptance and radical self-compassion. Because if I can have compassion on myself as an aging woman, if I can say, yes, I'm 50. Yes, my hair's this color now. Yes, my skin isn't the same. Yes, my energy levels aren't the same. But I still um, have hope. I still have purpose, I still have uh, a desire to contribute and a, and a purpose and I still have value and I think that rather than being self-obsessed or narcissistic or, or um, isolating, that that recognition of value in ourselves gives us the permission to recognize the value in everybody else. And I just want to honor our mature kaumatua. I want to honor our elders, our kaitiaki of New Zealand, who have worked to create the society that we are now benefiting from. And when I am out and about on the streets, when I am driving around and I see um, a mature person driving their car at the speed limit with their face looking not, not full of rage and stress, what I see is somebody who's who's cracked something. It's not that um, amateur people have forgotten how to drive. It's not that they 
can't push the pedal down hard enough to go faster. It's they've figured out that rushing around is for a different season, that all that relentless kind of activity and action and hustle and bustle and stress can be let go of. So, so I guess um, my, my widow, again, my challenge to myself and to you is, is for us to really honour the different seasons of our lives, that when we were children, we had this energy. And in our middle years, we have a different kind of energy and activity. And as we go into our wisdom years, we have a new energy and purpose and drive. And it's, it doesn't look, uh, it doesn't look, the same. And I guess that's where the sense of New Zealand being more inclusive, uh, recognising that in the branding of age concern, recognising that in the words of Robert Aitken when he said the society that we're moving into is more inclusive and needs to be more inclusive. That's true. So we can include in our own heads, hearts and bodies the sense that the wisdom years don't have to look the same as the middle years, that we can honour a calmer pace of life, we can honour a wisdom. And I do um, uh, really tutuku to our Māori, the Māori worldview that sees its elders as komatua. And I know that Age Concern has hemana kitanga komatua aotearoa as its uh, real translation. And that is that is a powerful translation. It's it's the hospitality, the holding, the, the honouring, the respecting of our elders. And I learnt te reo Māori for a couple of years and we had a kuia in our class. And friends, I I don't know if we had, when we were assessed, so different from our um, Western um, assessments, there was achieved or in a, um, achieved or in a if not uh, in a y it was not it stood for not achieved yet and i loved that you've achieved it or you haven't achieved it yet but there's still hope and this kuya she really struggled with her real she hadn't had it as a young woman and yet there was honor there was respect and there was hospitality for her in that karahe in that class and i know that in our hearts um certainly in my heart that there is uh, room to honour, respect and have hospitality for the next generation. And I know that when I practice that kind of radical hospitality, when I am focused on the dignity and the well-being, on the equity and on the respect of my elders, then when I become an elder, that in fact I've paved the way for myself, that in fact New Zealand is a great place to live and that together, which is what Age Concern is all about, it's all about collaboration. It's all about connection. It's all about um, working together. And that's why I guess the volunteers are so powerful in this organisation. But New Zealand is a great place to live and together we can absolutely make it a country that's a great place to age. And I feel rather than daunted or downtrodden about that, I feel excited. And I don't want to pretend that there aren't challenges, that there aren't difficulty, that there isn't abuse. And so Along with the paying attention piece, I guess I would, of course, add trust, that we have to trust our gut, which was Age Concerns message to New Zealand. If you think an old person is being or an elder person is being um, abused, trust your gut. And that we need to trust our gut, that we see, I guess, the beauty and the value and the worth of our elders and that we... Uh, yeah, really honour and respect that in a way that's life-giving for them and is also life-giving for us. To me, what Age Concern is doing and the rebranding and relaunch today is just um, an exhortation of the fact that this has great value and there is great value in all members of New Zealand society. So thank you very much. Namihi nui, kia koutou. Thank you for having me and I uh, hope the croissants were delicious. Back to you, Karen, I believe Karen's gonna take the podium.